Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about having 20 years of experience and not getting any jobs. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, can you talk about being a senior developer with more than 20 years in the business, but nobody wants to hire you because you are over 55 years old? Well, if you've been working for 20 years and nobody wants to hire you, I would say that you've made the what I like to call the factory worker's mistake. And the factory worker's mistake is that you go to a job, usually fairly early in your years, and it gets really comfortable. You start assembling something on an assembly line or whatever, and then time just flies by. You do other things, you completely, you, you don't care about your career or your long term uh, you have no long term strategy for anything and then the factory shuts down when you're at an age where doing that thing that you've been doing for 20 years is something that people who are 19 can do and there are not that many more factories or something like that it's, it's a story that is as old as industry it happens all the time literally all the time and now you can't find any jobs and it's the unemployment office for you I will never understand, well I do understand it, it's just that I don't, I think that it is, is irresponsible and I would say even, even a little bit immature, I'm sorry to come down on you like this, to get to a point where you don't actually even think about the future. Because if you've been doing something for 20 years and in those 20 years you have never ever stopped and thought, what is my... What, what, where am I, where am I going to be when I'm in my 50s? I think that you have, you, then I, I, don't, I really don't think that you have thought about this to, uh, all that much. I would expect that type of living for the day behavior from someone who is in their 20s. But surely when you're getting to your 30s or your 40s, you should have some thought or idea that you might have to progress your career or like have a strategy for when your market value isn't as high anymore because that's the thing that's the thing that nobody seems to be talking about which i think is hilarious you we like to hold up this piece of pe paper that says that i have 20 years but who cares if all the jobs are for people who have five years if you look at the average cv requirements there's gonna be a range usually one to five is the normal range at least and of course it's it's valuable that you have more than that but that doesn't make or break the uh, that's not the only thing that factors in it's a much more complicated selection process than that it's not like if you come in with f 20 years of experience that that's the only thing that factors in it's more complicated than that quality years also in factor in if you have 20 years and you've been doing a basic application development who cares there, I can find people who have been doing their thing for five years who are going to be able to code at the same level as you or at the very least be able to code at a level where I as the consumer of the product I can't really tell the difference I can't tell the difference if it was someone who made it who's been working for 20 years or someone who's been doing it for five years and if I can't appreciate that difference I'm not going to hire you because odds are that the youngers, uh, the younger people are going to fit in better into my work environment because the average range, like the average age ra uh, range in an IT company among developers is 20, 30, sometimes 40, that they're about, it's the normal range. So I don't really have, as a job provider, I don't have much incentive to hire you, which this is the thing that this person might be discovering right now. So what you can do is to start your own company. That would be something that you could do. You can also just do what the juniors have to do, which is just try to find a company that is willing to overlook your age you can also switch careers. You can become a recruiter. There's other options. I would actually go, if you're really unsure about this, I would talk to the recruiters. Because the recruiters, for better, like, they do get exposed to a lot of different companies. They know what the companies are looking for. They also know what roles that the companies are looking for. And just roughly the sort of profile, which is the important part. What sort of profile are they looking for and if that profile matches yours you might be able to complement your knowledge or do something in that area you can say and figure out if 
there's another role or something that where you might fit in. I have I know it that I know for a fact that it's not impossible to get a pure coding job at 55 because I have friends who have done this. The friends that usually do the best like, or in the uh, th that actually has a high market value even at this age they are usually the people who moved up into management or project or project um, or became POs or they're architects or something like that where their experience is actually valued because if I'm gonna hire somebody who has 20 years of experience I don't really it's not usual it's not that common that I'm gonna hire someone who just does the coding I want that person to help me lead my company to success which is like and this is very common I mean, I'm. I can speak for my own company as well. Like we hired, we've hired people at this. Well, not exactly this age, but for this exact purpose, because we have a lot of thirty-somethings uh, people who are very good at what they do, but they simply don't have the experience from the industry to be able to make those big, big level decisions that make or break the company. I can like just the other day we had. Uh, discussion about a very very high stakes technical uh, decision that we have to make and it's at the company level it's not at the code level because we know like, we have all the people we need to make the code level discussions like we we and these people are usually they have between 5 to 15 years of experience we don't need someone with 30 years or 20 years of experience to make those decisions but what we do know and what, what we did need was all right we need to actually create a roadmap plan for this entire department we're going to create an entire department with this entire set of teams and complete and invest I don't know how much money into this thing we really need this to go well and none of the coders have any knowledge of how to do this because the coders they don't know how to set up a good budget how to set, how to position the company so that investors are going to buy into this and the boards and like um, that they are going to back the proposal and all of this corporate level stuff they have no idea but the guy who had 55 had uh, 20 plus years of experience and was a bit older he did because he has been paying attention and he's been part of running multiple companies at that level and that's why we hired him not to write the code so what I want you to take away from this is that if you're finding it hard to find an employment and you have a lot of years of experience, odds are that you're trying to get a, a position doing something where there are people who are younger than you that can already do the job to satisfaction for, for the people who are hiring. So they're not interested in hiring somebody who is vastly or above average age because they can find someone who is more appropriate for the role. That's how they look at it. So what you have to think about is, all right, if you're in the situa situation today, well, then you're going to have to either start your own company, keep at it, hopefully find some company who is willing to overlook the age thing, or you're going to have to look into and go and talk to some recruiters and see if there's other roles that you can fulfill or you can switch careers. If you're not at that age but uh, and you're listening now and you're a younger profile, I highly suggest that you start thinking as I said. You can you have to think about the, your career as having a life cycle. It's going to start off really in many cases start off start off slow, go up, level out and start dropping again. And that drop, that drop off is only it's going to happen if you just keep on doing the same thing. If you have the factory worker workers career problem strategy, that is the risk that you are running. You see that convenience of not having to study a lot and like continuously learning and keeping yourself relevant and all that extra work that the career hungry people are doing, that luxury of just being able to go home and never have to think about it, that's the risk. That's the that's the other side of that. That's really nice and convenient until it doesn't go your way. And that is a very, very risk, uh, uh, real risk that can happen. It might also not happen, but it could. And you have to weigh, uh, you have to pick for yourself what your long term st career strategy is going to be. Because I can promise you, if you continuously develop your skills and you actually learn more and more and you actually increase your sphere of responsibility and understanding of the industry you will be able to find secure employment even in your retirement years i can promise you that that will ha that that's possible because i see it happening every single day have a great day